reducer part modeling and CFD analysis. To do this, open Inventor, check your units, whether they are in millimeters and drawing standards are in ISO, change it to these, press OK, then click on new part, start 2D sketch, start the sketch on a new plane, make a rough sketch initially, which will look somewhat like that will use a pipe, as you can see. Then double check your dimensions, use the dimensions you have. For me, I'm going to make this from the center line and I will use the revolve command to make this reduce a pipe. Okay. For this, I will need this dimension, which will be 40 millimeters. Click on dimension, specify the dimension, for me, it is 40 millimeters. The dimension on this side at the outlet is half of 40 will be 20. Then the total size is 300 millimeters. This dimension is given to me as 150. Once you have done this, press escape, click on this line, delete, press delete, click on this line and press delete. Ensure you delete the line, not the dimension. Once you have done that, draw a line which will represent this 100 millimeter dimension. Press enter and press enter again. Now you need to specify the curve. You know, do the curve. You, the radius given to you 72.50. Click on R. Start from this point and at this point and then specify the radius which is 72.50. Press enter. It will make the arc for you. Now to do the CFT analysis, we are concerned with the inner dimensions, okay? The 80 and the 40. 80 for the inlet, 40 for the outlet. And we also have to make, model this completely to have this thickness of the reducer pipe. What we can do, um, we can copy the upper part of this diagram and click on a base point, click Select a base point on the screen and just specify any size of the reducer pipe, any thickness of your choice. Okay, once you have specified, right click, press continue, and it will model the reducer pipe for you. The next step is to delete these reference lines which you initially made. Afterwards, join these two points. Click on finish sketch, click on revolve command and select the center line and it will press OK and it will model the reducer pipe for you. The next step is to specify the material. Select the reducer pipe, select the material from the given range. I'm going to select stainless steel or you can select any material of your choice for example mild steel to run this in cfd uh, you need to save this part um, as sat file in order to do that click on file click on export cad format and you can save this Example, producer pipe. From this, save as type, select the SAT file types, and press save. 
you will save this part as SAT file. You can also save it as IPD. If you save it as IPD and you have also saved it as SAT file, SAT file can be opened directly from CFD. But if you want to go to CFD via Inventor, you can click on simulation and you can click on active model to go to CFD from here. If you have the same versions of 2021 CFD and 2021 Inventor, your file will open in the CFD. If your CFD is 2019 and your Inventor model you have made is in 2021 Inventor model, it will make you it will give you geometrical errors. The next step is to open this model in CFD. To open in CFD, to open this model in CFD, open CFD from your apps. Once the CFD is opened, okay, click on new and browse the for your model where you have saved it. I have saved it in. As I have saved it as an SAT file already, so it will appear. Wherever you have saved your file, you can open it from here. Click on open. Design study, producer pipe. Click on create. And the first thing you should do when your CFT opens, you can minimize this output part by just clicking, clicking on it and this will minimize it and you will have a larger working area. The next step is to save this analysis somewhere where you can access it again and again. You can save it in downloads. I'm going to save it in downloads where I can access it again and again. If you want to save it somewhere else, you can do that as well. Once you have saved it, the next step is to change the units. Right click on geometry, click on change length units to millimeter. You can specify the units of your choice from here. After this, you need to use geometry tools to specify the material inside this nozzle. As you can see, the nozzle is hollow from inside. There isn't any material inside. To model, to run this EFT analysis on this nozzle, we need to have another material inside. So we can click on geometry tools. If you want to refine this uh, model further, for example, you want to reduce the amount of analysis time, you can merge the edges, okay? And you can use the geometry modification tools from here. You can remove the small objects from here as well. For the time being, we're going to fill the void inside this reducer pipe. So click on void fill and select the edge of the opening for example here this is the outlet i will select the edge click on build surface it will make a surface on the edge over there now select the inlet specify the edge click on build surface it will build the surface for you after this click on fill void to make the void inside once you have done this close geometry tools you can press Ctrl and you can press with your middle mouse button to see whether the void has been completely filled inside. As you can see, the void has been completely filled inside. So my model is ready to do the CFT analysis. The next step is to specify the material. You can specify the materials from both sides, from the model tree and from the modeling space here as well. Click on the object you want to specify the material click on edit specify this material i want it, this to be a solid and um, by default it is steel so i'll go ahead with it you can select the material of your choice from here press apply this will change the material of the reducer part you can see steel has been assigned and is grayish in color as compared to dark gray uh, we have got unassigned material and it says unassigned material on this side as well 
you can click on the material here to select it or you can also select it from the model tree by just clicking on the material and it will select it once it is red it means it is selected click on edit specify the material as fluid and select the material of your choice for example water or supply and this will specify the material for it the next step is to specify the boundary conditions to specify the boundary conditions you need to know which is your outlet and what is your inlet for example in this case i'm assuming this is my inlet and at inlet i have velocity of water going inside in meters per second uh, I will specify the magnitude. You're going to use the magnitude which you have. I'm um, assuming it could be 150, but use the velocity magnitude according to your given data. The next step is to specify the outlet. To specify the outlet, you need to specify that the pressure at the outlet is zero. So change the boundary conditions from type to pressure and Ensure the unit is in Pascal, pressure zero, press apply, and this will specify the boundary conditions at inlet and at the outlet. Once the boundary conditions are specified, the next step is to specify the mesh. Although you can auto size, you can click on auto size to run the analysis and quickly and have a few. Uh, have a look at the CFT, uh, have a look at the pressure and velocity distribution, but you can manually specify the mesh as well. For the time being, I'm going ahead with the auto size. I will auto size use the by default mesh size and I'll run the simulation. Later on, later in this video, I'm also going to show how you can manually do the mesh and how you can do the mesh conversion studies as well. Click on solve. Specify the number of times you need to run the simulation. Uh, by default it is set to 100. I will uh, show you why this is uh, once we see a conversions plot of the iterations needs to run. You can specify 200 or 300 according to your own requirements. You can solve and this will start the simulation. You can check the number of elements from here, how many elements which has been produced. And as you can see in the convergence plots, the number of times the simulation is running has been increasing by one each time and it will run a hundred times the importance of this convergence plot and the number of iteration is that initially at the start of simulation you won't be able to get accurate results but the times the software runs the simulation it is understanding the analysis better and eventually as you will be able to see quite uh, if your results are not varying a lot this is known as convergence studies if your results are not varying after each iteration you can assume that your results are correct for example velocity in x is not uh, varying velocity in z axis is varying quite a lot after each iteration iteration so it means my results are not fully accurate yet i may need to run the simulation 200 times to get more accurate results and as you can see from here the pressure was initially quite different in the first few iterations when the software ran, but after 50th iteration, I was getting somewhat similar results, but they are still changing. I may need to run the simulation a hundred more times to check whether this will remain same. This is known as a convergence studies. You run the analysis a hundred times to see whether every time you're getting the same results. So if after each iteration, if you're getting the same results, it means these lines will be straight lines. If these are straight, it means you are getting accurate results. If they are still changing, you can see the trend is changing as well from 50th iteration from the middle till the 100th iteration. It means you need to run the simulation further to get more accurate results. So now let's analyze the results which we have obtained. We have got velocity magnitude 710123 millimeters per second. So that is the magnitude of the velocity at the outlet. And we can also view the pressure distribution across this uh, nozzle as well. By click, right click, click on global result and click on static pressure. This will show you 2.75 times 10 raised to power 8 pascals is the static pressure across this nozzle. You can also visualize the results by clicking on planes. 
and you can add a plane and from this you can specify the direction of the plane for example i need it to be aligned to y axis or you can need it to be aligned to z axis as well and you can visualize the results from here so this is the pressure distribution across the nozzle right click to click on global result to look at the velocity magnitude as well okay and you can also view uh, the traces as well of how the water is going to flow from the nozzle mm -hmm. click on traces then the next step is to specify the seat type maybe circular add the seat type and you can specify the seat density as well and then you can visualize the flow of water inside the nozzle but we are more interested in uh, how what is the magnitude of velocity and what is the magnitude of static pressure right click global result and static pressure now uh, this was the results of automatic meshing as you can see mesh size has been specified automatically but uh, you're also whenever you're required to do a mesh conversion studies it means you need to refine the mesh further okay and you need to do a conversion studies convergence plot like this for example on horizontal axis you can have the number uh, different types of machine you have different types of mesh sizes you have used and on the horizontal axis you can have uh, the results of velocity and pressure you what you will be doing for mesh convergence studies is to run the uh, simulation different time um, uh, uh, various times by changing the mesh sizes and every time you get a result you are going to plot it on a convergence graph like this and you are going to demonstrate that with more mesh refinement the results are not changing so how to do that at mesh refinement and how to check what is your current mesh size so click on edit and select the objects and you will be able to see the current mesh size from there change this from property type to manual yes plus yes and select the objects and you will be able to see the current mesh size so the current mesh size is 21.94 which is not much refined and the approximate elements right now a number of elements is 8400 so you need to refine the mesh further so that you can get more accurate results start with 21 which should be your first and keep refining the mesh until you get say straight convergence plot okay and keep checking your velocity and pressure distribution so let's refine the mesh from here element size specify the element size as let's say if it is 21 i want to refine it further i will specify 15 and i will press apply and i'll click on solve continue from zero And this time around, I have 10,000 elements. You can refine the mesh further and keep running the simulation now we have got 718116 which is quite a different result as compared to what we had before you can specify the mesh size again right you can click on edit here as well and you can also click on edit from here edit keep make sure your mesh sizes are from the type are selected to manual specify the mesh size let's say this time around i'm going with five element size press apply and click on solve start from the zero attrition to get more good results
now you have refined the mesh further, so it is going to take a bit more time as compared to before to run the analysis. You can visualize the results while the simulation is still running. We will be back once the simulation is completed. Now that the simulation is completed, it shouldn't take you more than 2-3 minutes to run the simulation at 5 mesh size. And as you can see from here that the conversions plot is showing that the results were still changing. So we need to run the simulation more times, but for the time being, uh, we are going ahead with this. So the plain results you are seeing right now, we can turn off the uh, example traces by clicking on remove. So the results in the plane you are seeing right now, this is for static pressure. If you want to visualize velocity distribution, right click, plane result and velocity magnitude, it will show you the velocity magnitude. Your CFD analysis ended uh, where you completed the, for example, when you got the results, but uh, this, the later part of the video, is all about mesh mm -hmm. refinement. Again, to view the mesh size, just click on Edit. Make sure your mesh type is specified uh, manual. Select the objects with the mesh sizes. And you can define the mesh further as well as compared to what you have specified before as well. You can define it and you can even increase the mesh size from here as well. And to visualize the results, you will be able to use different tools like planes, traces, isosurfaces, and so on. And right click to view the, um, you can change the global results from velocity to static pressure and to view the results as well. So that's all. That's how you run the CFE analysis on a reducer pipe.